Um, I might do a few of these because it's hard to get across how good Workflow is in in a video. It's so amazing for so many different reasons. Uh, I just thought I'd concentrate on on one of them. I I am a I'm a kind of a geek when it comes to structures in uh, TV shows and films. <clears throat> More TV shows because <laughs> they're easier. One thing I sometimes do is when I uh, when I see a, a a show that I think is particularly fine, that is particularly well crafted, I try and write down the beats and I try and I try and I try and think about what I'm seeing and and why things are happening in the order they are. So this is one I did for the eating contest in, in Bilko, the famous uh, one about Ed Hennigan, Hannigan, I think his name is, who is played by Fred Ward, who you remember from the Monsters, or you may not remember, uh, from the Monsters, I remember, and Car 54, where are you? He, he plays a guy who can eat just anything, any amount. Bilko realizes he's a sure thing to win this eating contest, and this is how the episode works out. So, so this was all. This was all what I wrote. Other people might write it a different way, but I kind of realized that that the episode was a series of reveals and reversals, big surprises uh, happening with reversals of those big surprises. It seemed to me a very useful one to watch, especially doing. Count Arthur, which was my attempt to be to do something that was a bit like Bilko. So this structure seemed like a instructive one. As you can see, it's broken down into into these bullet points. Um, but but that's not how I wrote it. How I originally wrote it was that uh, I I wrote down uh, what happened, and then very precisely I went through the whole thing, went down into the micro beats, just wrote them out. But then I was able to organize them into, into very easily because Workflow does everything easily. But I was able to organize them into these uh, main points, main moments. This is what it looks like when you when you drill down into into one of these beats. So it go it has its own separate page. In here we have this is this is the setup to the show. There's an ongoing bad situation. The platoon's rotten record in gambling against Company A. By the way, how simple is is that that you have to remember Company A and Company B? How genius is that? It's affecting not just the morale of the motor pool, but the cooks and everyone else. The whole of Company B are are being affected by this uh, terrible slump they've had in gambling. So so the stakes are big. Morale is low, and the stakes are big as a result. Money is established as the most important stake to Bilko, but more than all that, we had money on the thing, which gains a big laugh. But morale is established as the most important thing for everyone else, even though money is always the ostensible goal. Okay, so that's me basically going down into this and, and, and writing down everything I can think about it and how it works. Okay, so if I go back to the to the main list and you've written all these and they all drill down in that way, you know, infinitely. Sorry, these are three others I did. Old Glory from King of the Hill and Cheers. But you can drill down into them, but you can also open them on this page, which I will do. You can already see uh, that it's a, it, it's a very populated uh, list, you know? I mean, I don't want to go into the whole structure of the eating contest. Or well, maybe I should. No, I want to. I want to use it just to show one aspect of workflow. That's very useful. Oh, where is it? Is it here? Oh, it's because of this bloody light. The light's shining in my face, and I can't see it. So yes, you have a you have a bunch of options here that allow you to do various things. You can share it. You can expand everything. Expand everything. There, that's the button I needed earlier. And you can collapse everything. Okay. But the other thing you can do, and this is where it's really genius. I mean, it's such a simple thing, but it is genius. You can duplicate it, right? So if, if uh, so now I have this copy of the structure. It's exactly the same, right? But what I can do is I can delete all these, you know? And once I do that, I can write my own version of all this stuff, you know? Uh, so I can have the original one up here, 
look at how look at some of the look at all the notes I've taken from this and then bounce back into here and I can start creating my version of the episode count author has never had a nice birthday party it's always a disaster it's beginning to get him down okay so um the thing i just wrote there is uh, i just came up with it off the top of my head and you can already see that like the one in bilko that's a great starting point for a story count author has never had a nice birthday party it's always a disaster it's beginning to get him down right why you know and then that might make you think uh why is it why why do people why is this birthday party never never enjoyable why does it never work uh it's because uh it's because no one seems to care enough to do anything special for him he realizes okay and then you can make this because it's a kind of a subbeat, you can turn this, put it there, right? And then you can, uh, uh, you know, and then you can say, here's a list of bad birthdays from the past. When old Ben, when old Ben found, <laughs> found the keys to the quarry keys to the quarry and it wasn't <laughs> as fun as it sounded something like that right there's there's your first joke you know there's the first first joke of the episode now this this is not you know and i don't know if this is good or not it actually is better than i thought it would be um uh but this is kind of what i'm talking about so so I, I've now created the same thing that exists at the, at the start of the Bilko episode, and I've, I've turned it into something different, right? Uh, so then I, I can go back up, I can open it out, or I can close it up, and then I can go back to this list, which is the thing, which, I've now, which I'm now calling, right? So, or, you know, something like that. Anyway, that's, that's the point. So, so now I've kind of, and then I can actually change this to make myself remember more about it. So I could call this birthday blues, so making it lowercase. So it's now a bit easier to read and more human. So yeah, so you can basically just continue to do that. You go to the next thing, right? And the next thing is development. Okay. So what's the development here? Enter Ed Hannigan, a big monolith of a soldier. Bilko questions him aggressively about sports, but he's not a sporty type. Bilko loses interest, no gambling potential here, right? And you know, that could go like that with the arrival of a new person in, in the thing, or, or maybe the development is something else. Maybe the development is about someone who's already there. Okay, we had a character called Eggy. So let's say Eggy, Eggy has planned something, something big. A full day. Wonderful surprise after wonderful surprise. Eggy has planned something. A full day. Wonderful surprise after wonderful surprise. That's the development. Okay. So, so this is actually ends with uh, with uh, um, everyone is is very happy about this state of affairs. Maybe they all giggle and make. And Arthur paranoid. Ooh, so that actually could lead to the first reversal, right? Birthday blues development. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so here we have the first big reveal reversal, okay? And we lose these again. And we say. Mm. Uh, Count Arthur uh, leaves town because he's so because he's so because the laughing upset him so much, you know. And when people worry about formulas and and anything that looks like it might be, 
the, the way great stories and great art is created is it doesn't just come to you in one go. There's all sorts of tools and, and techniques that you need uh, to be able to, to create stories that make sense, that are rock solid, you know, but basically anything you can do to help you write the first draft, which this is really, because it's the first draft of the story, anything you can do to help you write the first draft is great, you know? And, and as I say, you can go through the whole thing, you can kind of personalize it in such a way, you might decide you don't need these three. So you can just delete it and delete it. Oh, I wish I'd, I wish I'd said two. two. Let's pretend I said two um, uh, and delete it. Uh, so, so, you know, your story, you know, it'll, it'll start look, to look differently anyway, you know? And if, and if your story is any good, um, you'll probably follow the story rather than, you know, stick to the rest of these. Like you can, yeah, this is how you do it. You can lose all of these, you know, delete. And now we have a thing about Ken Arthur leaving town because the laughing upset him. So it's a different type of structure maybe. So you would call it, um, uh, you know, now it's a, now it's a, 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 a chase, maybe even, even a race against time. So, uh, yeah, so now it's a chase or something, maybe even a race against time. I, I don't know what I, where I'm going there, but you, I, think you, I think you understand what I mean. Like, let's say we have, it could be a line. Yeah, it could be a line like, um, uh, we have to get to him before his birthday. Before his birthday. Ah, flip off. Before his birthday. So, uh, yeah, so, so that, so that is a, that's called a ticking clock, right? So now there's a ticking clock, which will, which will kind of, uh, form the structure, you know? So you could even do this. You could even start doing this. Okay. So your, your structure could, could start to follow the day, you know, and then you could, you could decide for instance, that the last part of the program will be the time 1130 to 12, right? Okay, so your your last it, it suggests that it's getting more and more exciting, and time is getting more and more tight. All right, you don't know what's going to happen at all these times, and these may not be all the right times for the things to happen, apart from this one, which because it has to be twelve o'clock at night. But but that might provide you with a way of starting to think about the the shape of the rest of the thing. Of course, you don't even need to do that. You can you know you could, you could say oh maybe that'll be useful later on. You know, but, but I'll keep it out of sight for the moment so I don't need to think about it. Uh, and then you can write, oh, just every uh, single thing that happens. Okay. And once you've got that list of every thing, single thing that happens, you can put them into the sub lists, you know. So, it, so, so, so it, all I'm saying is that it kind of allows you to to have a big picture view of what you're doing and then a, and then a, 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 you can close up to the most essential things. And during that time, when you write everything, it'll just grow. That list will grow until you have what's just a very, very detailed breakdown of, of your idea of why it works, of how it works. Uh, you, you start to get a feel of, of whether the, the um, story will hang together and whether people will believe it, right? So that's kind of, that's something that you need on a first draft. You really, really need to feel that people will believe it. So this is one way of doing it, you know? I also have, as you can see up here, I've also got a save the, the cat template. Uh, so let's say you want to make a um, very, very conventional, conventionally structured American comedy. Okay, so you want to do something like Legally Blonde, okay, which I think is a perfect Save the Cat film. I duplicate again, all right, and then I leave that alone. I don't touch that. I call this um, uh, the Giddy Goats. I'll call it the Giddy Goats. And then you have first act, second act, act third act. It's divided into, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy who wrote the book, but... It's divided into his sections, opening image, setup, um, catalyst, debate, and then on into the second act, and then on into the third, okay? But you can take this and you can make it all, now it's about the giddy goats, uh, the, uh, 
I don't know, ice hockey team made up of. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's it's basically a, a, a way of of just making just just kind of making yourself follow a structural uh, you know principle of some sort or another. Like that's just I've got as you can see I've got like Commedia dell'arte characters. I've got uh, here's a, here's a list of uh, pitching tips I found on one site on how to pitch a TV show. Uh, because you know the Americans have that honed down to such a to such an extent that you you really be mad not to listen to them when they're telling you how to do them. And you know, here's the hero's journey. Let's see how how complicated I made this. Yeah. So this is that's the hero's journey. God, it's longer than I remember. All of these things. These again, you don't have to follow all of them. You don't have to slavishly use any kind of uh, structural structural system. But you know, they can give you they can give you a a, a little bit of a, I don't know. They can just they can just guide your thinking along a certain line that is sometimes useful is and sometimes leads to inspirations that you otherwise would not have had. I'll give you I'll give you an example. If we have uh, refusal of the call, uh, that is a is it, 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 even even you know whether the hero's journey actually does work as a kind of universal story. I have a feeling it does uh, for for many kinds of stories. I think the reason that that I that I instinctively feel this is because when I read it the first time, I saw the refusal of the call moment, and I knew exactly what it was. And I realized that I've seen it in in millions of films. No hero ever says we need you to do this, and goes and goes, okay, I'm off. <laughs> you know, I think Indiana Jones is the only one who, who does that. <laughs> Everyone else is like. Should I? Should I? I don't know. Oh, you'll, you'll be. It'll be dangerous and all this sort of stuff. So that kind of um, that kind of uh, uh, beat is something I'd seen a lot. Okay. So yeah, sorry. I don't mean this to run on into uh, different things, but because that's an interesting beat, something I, I recognize. You can you can look at your story. You can look at it and you could say, well, what's my character's refusal of the call? Is it the is it is it the threshold guardians? Is there an external thing that's preventing him from setting out on the adventure that he needs to set out on? Uh, separation, reluctance. Yeah, is there someone he uh, he he doesn't want to leave uh, at home? A little a little lady. So this is uh, you know it's just the written out hero's journey. I wrote it out. Uh, you know, and as I wrote it out, I tried to understand what each 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 one means, even though I can't remember most of these. I'm going to have to look at it again. So you can do the same thing with this. As I said before, you can duplicate it because you have a kind of a Star Wars type idea that will follow the hero's journey quite slavishly. Um, uh, and you, <laughs> oh no, no, I have to think of another title. Call it um, Bra Adventure. It's now, that's, that's your film. All I'm saying is Workflowy is an incredibly useful app for screenwriters or people who want to write especially if they're like me and they they write their their things from a structure first uh, uh standpoint which is sometimes good and sometimes bad i'll explain about that in a in a, in a later video so yeah so so uh, that's all i wanted to say look out for bra adventure and i will see you anon bye